Hello everybody and welcome to this video tutorial that's going to show you how to configure IVC VPN on an Asus router using both OpenVPN and PPTP. So after you've set up your router and configured a login details for it and also the Wi-Fi names and passwords, you'd be ready to start these steps. So whilst you're connected to the ASUS, either via cable or by Wi-Fi, you can go to router.asus.com and it will open up the settings page asking you to log in. Now, before we start, uh, head over to the WANG menu and head over to the connect to a DNS server automatically option and choose no and set up alternative DNS servers. Now if you Google for these you'll find Quad9, Komodo, uh, Cloudflare. Uh, I've set up Google's DNS servers in this example which is 8.8.8.8 .8 and as a secondary server 8.8.4.4 .4. and once you've done that you scroll down to the bottom and hit apply. So when you're configuring OpenVPN, you're going to need the OpenVPN configuration files from IVC's website. So if I head over to this link here, which I've prepared, I'll have all of these things down in the description for you to quickly get access to them. So you'll find the DDWRT Linux Android and iOS. You need to download this file. And when you download that file, you end up with a single archive that inside it contains all the server's configuration files as individual files. So once you've downloaded that file, in my machine, I've actually installed WinRAR to uh, decompress the archive. Although in Windows, you can do a right click and choose extract all. So you head over to your download of that file and you right click on it and you'll either have extract all or in my scenario I'm just going to say extract here. And it's created a folder and inside that folder is all the configuration files for uh, the servers. But there's two for each country. A UDP type protocol connection and a TCP type protocol connection. For some weird reason, UDP is unstable on the ACES. You will be able to use it, configure it, and uh, run it for half an hour, turn your back on it, and you'll find that it gets disconnected. And not only that, it doesn't recover back from the disconnection. The ACES router is automatically configured to uh, reconnect to a VPN, the VPN if it accidentally loses connection. Uh, but it doesn't do it when uh, the UDP configuration file is used. So later on, when I'm setting up the conf uh, configuration in the ASUS, I will be using the TCP version of um, the OpenVPN file. We will also be using the WDC key, and we'll also be using the CA.CRT file, both of those files as well. So we've extracted them. Let's head over back to the ASUS. So we head over to VPN and then VPN client. And here is where we have, I've already configured the open VPN connection connected to IVC. I'm not going to click on edit to show you the settings because it's got my username and password. But I'm going to show you how I created it here using the add profile option. So I choose add profile, open VPN, and I'm putting a description for whatever the name of the country I'm connecting to, for example, UK. You'll put in your email address for your login details, your username, and you'll put in a password, and these are your IVC VPN uh, login details. We then click on Browse, and we head over to the folder that's got the files that we extracted. And we choose, in this case, I'm going to choose London UDP. Uh, sorry, we're going to choose the TCP version because the UDP is unstable. So we choose that file and we click on upload. 
After a little spin cycle there, it tells you that it's complete, but we're not done yet. You then need to click on import in this little tick box here and a secondary browse option appears. We're going to hit browse again and it's important that we now upload the WDC key file. And we press the upload button and a second later it uploads it. But there is a blip that's not explained in any IVC instructions. You then need to click on edit and it turns out that the information we just uploaded, the static key, is actually in the wrong box. It's gone into the certificate authority key when it should be in the static key box down here. So I put my cursor inside that box, I press Control A to select everything and I press Control X to cut it and it's in memory now and I put my cursor down in static key and I press Control and V to paste it into that box. So I've moved what imported into the client authority box into the static key box. And I click on save. We then need to upload the CA certificate file. So we choose browse again, we choose the CA cert, we choose open and we choose upload. Now this ends up going into the top box again, but that's where it should go. If I click on edit, I can now see that it's filled in the certificate information into the top box and the static key remains in the right place. If we didn't move it, we would have ended up overwriting the uh, static key and it would never really go down here where it needs to be into, into this box. So it's all in the right place. And now normally you would click OK and I won't do that now because I've just typed in gibberish for the login details. You click OK and you'll end up with a connection line like this for in your address book for VPN connections. So you will normally then click on an activate button. At the moment it's already activated. And normally you would see a tick. But when you're using OpenVPN there is a rule set up in that configuration file from IVC, a, a root 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 that causes a routing conflict. It's harmless. You are still protected by VPN. It's just that you don't, this is just an alert. Uh, it's just that you don't see a tick. But it's now connected to OpenVPN. I'm going to do a speed test because I want to show you the difference between OpenVPN and um, PPTP. So I'm with version ISP 100 megabits and I'm going to click on go. And I'm expecting to get about close to 25 to 30 megabits. At the moment I'm on the 25 range and that's about right. Now this is actually on a semi high end router, uh, a dual core router. If you have a more budget router from Asus like the RTAC51U which is about 35 quid on Amazon, OpenVPN will only achieve about 7 megabits on that router. And the reason for that is that OpenVPN is mathematically intensive. And that process of encrypting your information is down to the CPU of your router. And CPUs don't really, uh, sorry, routers don't really have powerful CPUs. And then you start spending uh, 200, 300 pounds. And if you go into enterprise, it'll be, you know, a thousand pounds. So um, because they don't have a lot of grunt, the um, transfer speed uh, reduces itself to the capacity of the calculation speed of the router. But this is about right for, this is an RTAC66U, a 68U would produce the same sort of results and the 58U model also would produce. And there, the 58U is great value for money. It's just under 100 pounds and will get you about uh, 25 to 30 megabits at maximum with any uh, VPN service uh, that you choose. So that's 24 megabits per second. 
as a test. So now let's look into configuring PPTP. Now PPTP is considered as one of the oldest VPN protocols and it's considered not as secure uh, for the reason that it uses a smaller encryption key and also it's been found to have some flaws. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think uh, that you know it's it, it's a more lightweight protocol, and you're going to see probably triple the speed uh, using PPTP. You're going to hit maybe 70, 80 megabits per second, and um, your ISP isn't going to be running cracking tools and hacking your PPTP connection. I mean, if you're somebody a lot more dangerous in the world and you have a government after you then they might apply those resources to uh, you know hunt and crack down your transmission uh, but the ISP is blocking websites that it's uh, being legally told to do so because you shouldn't have access to them and other things and literally filtering your connection from things and PP and VPN allows you to uncensor your internet and PPTP will uncensor you it is still a encrypted connection and um, through a normal ISP which isn't going to be uh, you know putting any extra effort to figure out what you're doing uh, it will work just as good so let's take a look at that PPTP doesn't use configuration files it uses a server name so on this link here which again I'll provide in the description you can hunt down the uh, country that you want to find servers for Oops. in this case here's a list of servers for the UK and you've got a PPTP uh, column now we're going to be using these server names so let's say I wanted to connect to this London server here I would need to highlight the server name and right click and choose copy because I'll be needing that for later and it's quite easy to set up a PPTP connection you click on add profile you already start off on the PPTP tab you'll put in the server description that you want and you'll paste control V the address that we took from the server list on IBC's website and again you'd put in your email address and again you'd put in your password for your IVC account and at the bottom here you will choose MPPE 128 and you choose OK and by doing that it would add an entry into your list in this case, I've already added a connection here with my VPN account login details, and I'm going to click on activate and activate that. So it should disconnect the top one, and there it is disconnected. And hopefully, I should get a uh, blue tick saying that it's connected to PPTP in via PPTP in Maidenhead through IVC VPN. Let's head over to the speed test again and let's hit on go to perform another speed test and there you go you can see that I'm reaching um, 67 70 I have seen it hit uh, 80 megabits per second uh, I could have tried the Maidenhead server instead of London sometimes that's a little bit more uh, faster and 5 megabits is my maximum upload speed so for upload it's doing it perfectly well but there's a big speed difference right it's and this test here it's nearly uh, triple uh, the speed so if that's important to you I think it could be worth that you use PPTP instead of OpenVPN so in the description uh, you'll have links to the models that I recommend if you're uh, on a RTAC 51 which is the budget router that will actually do 33 megabits per second using PPTP
so it won't hit the 68 you need to spend about 100 pounds 80 to 100 pounds on an asus router that will reach to the 70s and 80s uh, on pptp but 33 megabits per second is pretty decent uh, for streaming for iptv and uh, general general use uh, so uh, it's not uh, terrible uh, there are much cheaper routers that will just run a lot slower so uh, that's that speed test there in the description you'll find as well a um, links to all the downloads I've done the software that I've used the Rinra software and if there's I sometimes have a VPN deal like at the moment there's a five-year VPN deal uh, that I can offer uh, on eBay for about uh, 58 pounds so that's not even 10 pounds uh, a year uh, for um, a VPN service I'm not too sure how long that deal will last for and check the description I'll try to keep it up to date with the most relevant deal as and when time goes along and uh, whatever is relevant I'll put it in there so thank you very much for watching I hope this video has been useful and uh, give it a like and if you wish to see a few more things that I do online you're welcome to subscribe Thank you very much for watching once again and take care.